702. I'm going to, uh, if we're all ready, I'm going to call this uh, regular meeting of the Bethel Board of Selectmen to order for Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, you got your flag. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, liberty, and justice, justice for all. All right, first order of business is uh, consideration of the special minutes of the special meeting of September 4th. Uh, short meeting, Friday, September 4th. I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll right, make that motion. motion. Motion by Paul, second by Rich. Any any uh, any changes, corrections, comments? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries. Uh, moving on to second item, first selectman's report. Um, a, a number of things to uh, bring you up to date on since that last meeting on the fourth. Uh, as you, I'm sure you're aware of this, but the governor extended the state of uh, public health emergency to uh, February 9th. Um, and uh, but not all the executive orders are going to carry on that long. He he extended the the current executive orders through November 9th, not February, except for any orders that have a later date built into the language of the order. Um, so presumably the uh, governor's office is going to be uh, reviewing those, and they may be extended, they may not, they may be altered depending on conditions. So um, we'll keep you up to date on that. You also may have seen that just yesterday in yesterday's press conference, the governor announced fines uh, for people who fail to comply with the social distancing and mask wearing orders. Uh, the fine structure is $100 for an individual who refuses to wear a mask in a enclosed public area, uh, $250 for a person who attends a large event, knowingly attends a large event that exceeds the maximum for either indoor or outdoor gatherings and $500 fine for a person who organizes and hosts an, a, a, an event that exceeds the, uh, the maximum amount allowed. Um, we don't really yet know how those are to be applied because uh, the governor's order simply said it's up to the municipalities to enforce them. So it's something I'm going to have to discuss with the police department, uh, discuss with uh, Chief Pugner and, and see how we want to handle that. Um, up, update on Eversource. Uh, I had the uh, privilege, I guess you'd call it, of participating in two long hearings. One of them was uh, took me 11 hours before my opportunity to testify. Uh, a follow-up hearing a week later, I only had to wait six hours for my turn to testify. But uh, following that testimony, uh, and you'll see that's on the agenda, I did file a motion with PURA, with the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority, to, um, uh, to allow, to petition Bethel into intervener status on the special investigation. That docket number is 20-08003, and uh, I'm issuing a, uh, a plea to Bethel uh, homeowners and businesses to write in to us and write into Pura and explain what happened to them during this outage. Um, Bethel really, with, without a doubt, got the short end of the stick on the recovery. Um, we were not as severely affected as many other towns. They were towns. There were towns that had outages totaling over 90%. Uh, our maximum outage, outage was 67% of the town. Um, and as I was uh, discussing earlier, the, we actually have uh, more underground wires, uh, underground infrastructure than most other towns. So it should not have taken us, uh, taken them as long as it did to restore power to the town of Bethel. The maximum amount of time uh, we were at the tail, tail end of the recovery process, it was eight and a half days before we were 100% turned on. And I can tell you that is unacceptable because uh, Eversource crews drove right through Bethel to get to other places. Uh, we had absolutely no success in getting them to provide make safe crews um, or any other help until really the tail end of the recovery process. So I'm going to be uh, asking a little bit later in this agenda for your support on that, that request to uh, participate in the PURA investigation. Um, as you know, uh, school is uh, in session. 
I talked to Dr. Carver today. Uh, they've had a relatively smooth opening. I guess a couple of kids got on the wrong bus, uh, it, which is not atypical <laughs> going home uh, the first week of school, but uh, aside from straightening those issues out, um, kids are doing well. Um, we have daily contact with the health department. They are monitoring and watching very, very closely, and we're not seeing any indication uh, of any uptick in infection. It, it's something that they're watching like a hawk, uh, communicating with parents and, and keeping kids and staff safe. So that's going very well. So um, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, oh, just as a reminder for anybody who's listening, flu season is here. So uh, I plan to get my shot as soon as possible uh, so we can avoid what they are calling a twindemic. And I encourage everybody to do the same. And then uh, we'll hope that the scientists uh, get some real breakthroughs on the COVID uh, vaccine front too. So I'll stop there and I'll pause. Uh, Rich and Paul, do you have any comments or questions? Uh, just one question, Matt. Um, yeah. my, my question is, uh, what's the progress book with the police station and the litigation? Um, we have uh, signed all the forms with uh, Becht Engineering. That's the engineering firm that we approved a couple of meetings ago. Right, right now they are reviewing the Hoffman report and I expect them really any day to make an appointment to come out with their engineers to inspect the building. Good. So that, that is underway. Uh, good question. I'm, I should have covered that before, but um, things are, you know, we're, we're going to move that along as fast as possible. Good. So keep you in the, keep you in the loop. Any other questions or comments? No. No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item number four, public comments. If there's anybody who has anything to share, please raise your hand, let Dion know, and she'll, uh, she'll give you the floor. Not, nothing. No? No. Nope. Okay. Make sure. All right. So uh, making sure that, uh, all right, we'll just, I see Paula has unmuted. Did you have something you wanted to say, Paula? Yes. I don't see where the hand is that you raised. Oh, it's it's in the participant thing, but that's okay. However, you get attention. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to say I appreciate the fact that you're going to consider the Italian Heritage Day request for proclamation today, and also that it would be done with full, uh, you know, uh, social distancing. Okay. Okay. So I assume you're going to read it later. Um. Well, I, don't I, typically, I don't typically read them out loud, but the, the selectmen both have a copy. They were sent as part of the packet, so uh, I, they're aware of it. So, um, all right, thank you very much. Anything else, Paul, or is that, are you done? Okay, I assume. Uh, Tony. What, um, okay. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Paula, were you, were you still speaking? I, I, I lost you for a second. No, nope, okay. All right, uh, Tony, uh, welcome, Tony. I haven't seen you in a while. I saw your hand go up and now it's now it's down. Uh, oh, I'm s hi there, everyone. So nice to see you in person. I actually was just giving a thumbs up to the idea of an Italian heritage um, celebration. Certainly if the town goes ahead with it, I've offered to volunteer making a whole bunch of Italian food <laughs> so that people can enjoy some home cooked Italian meatballs and other goodies. Uh, and I thought that that was a great idea and also so I just recently wrote an article, uh, it's in the patch, about um, uh, underground wires and the next, you know, um, hurricane that we might, you know, or storm that we might have and that Connecticut in 2006 to 2009 buried uh, um, power lines, uh, 69 miles worth of it. So, and they were the very high powered ones, in fact. So when they say that they can't do it, they certainly can. They certainly can in lieu of, $40 million worth of bonuses that they pay to their execs. So, um, you know, uh, just a, a good hello to all of you. Miss seeing you, but appreciate all the hard work that your leadership does in the town. All right. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. All right. Well, that's a good segue to go into correspondence. Um, we have one letter here. This is from uh, Paula Antolini, and it is co-signed by a number of individuals, as you can see. And uh, as she mentioned, she is requesting um, that we create a uh, or, or approve a Italian Heritage Day. Um, actually, we 
this is something that we don't even need to vote on because the town has um, the town has not officially created any any kind of a heritage day for any group, but it uh, we supported a group that uh, conducted a uh, Columbus Day celebration. I think for the last 30 years, it goes all the way back to Ed Mills days. So um, really, all you have to do is uh, work with the Park and Rec Department and the Police Department if you want to have a parade. That is something that is uh, easily accomplished, and I will be honored to create a proclamation in honor of uh, Italian American heritage. So it's really not not an issue. We'd be glad to uh, glad to help with that. Um, can you hear me? Yes. No. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I got Go cut. Ahead. Yeah, my, my thing crashed before. Uh, it seems to always crash when I'm at a meeting. <laughs> um, we were also asking to raise a flag, the Italian flag, at, as it was done, but on the municipal lawn. Yeah. So, so that's, we, that's been, that's been yeah. done for years, many years. Uh, uh, last year, and I think the year before, the, the group that used to do it, uh, if you remember the Carluzzi family, um, <laughs> cre created a parade with the Santa Maria, which was Matt Carluzzi's ski boat on a trailer. Uh, Tony, I'm sure you were there too uh, for some of those. Um, and it would parade, I think Billy Michael provided music sometimes, uh, sometimes the, the band would play. Uh, and the group, uh, I, for whatever, I don't even know why, but the group did not get together to do that last year. But that is, uh, it, it's long been a tradition that we raise the uh, Italian flag on Columbus Day, the Irish flag on St. Patrick's Day. So um, not a problem. That's uh, that's not even something is uh, is an issue. Yeah, Rich. Okay, that's that's great. So we'll we'll uh, work through the park and rec for all the arrangements. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. And then um, you'll read the proclamation on that day. Is that how it works? Uh, if I'm in town, yeah. If not, I'll do I'll do my Italian. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Tony even saw me do do it in Italian. Correct, Tony? <laughs> yes, you were you were you were wonderful. You you were just great. Grazie, grazie molte. I, I, I know that Patsy the barber who is over there. You know, he was there. He says, "Paul, your Italian's pretty good, but you got to go back to Italy and practice some more." <laughs> yeah. Okay, Rich. Okay, Rich, thank you your so hand much. Up. Queen yeah. Isabella had retired. That's why they haven't done it in the past. Oh, couple that's years. right. That's right. Queen, the Queen retired. So, um, all right. Well, I guess uh, a new group is going to pick up the mantle, and that's that's great. All right. So um, we're going to move on to uh, item number six, which is consideration of approval of tax refunds. And to put the put this in motion, I'm going to put a motion on the floor that we authorize. Uh, tax refunds at the request of Ann Skako, the tax collector, in the amount of $6,443.95. Uh, these are a result of overpayment of taxes, mostly vehicle taxes. All right, second. Second, second by Rich. Any questions? No. All right, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 That carries. And last but not least, um, I would I want to put a motion on the floor. I'll put the motion on first, and then we can um, we can discuss it and uh, take whatever action. I'm going to put a motion on the floor that we retain the um, retain the firm of Cohen and Wolf PC as legal counsel um, for the motion to file for intervener status for the town of Bethel. Uh, up here, a docket number two zero dash zero eight dash zero three. So uh, if there's a second. I'll, uh, I'll then I'll explain what we're doing. I'll second that. Okay, so Paul seconded. So I filed the motion to intervene last Friday. The deadline was Friday at 4.30, so I got it in there at noon. Um, we, we don't have to uh, retain a legal firm to do it, but it, it is in our best interest to do so. Uh, right now, the towns of uh, Ridgefield, Newtown, and New Fairfield uh, have joined together on this. Uh, this, and we have a ma they have a master uh, retainer agreement to uh, pursue the uh, this particular docket, this investigation. Um, the cost will it's you know it's not it's not inexpensive. The cost will be probably about twenty five thousand dollars per town to do this. Um, but it, what we are seeking is uh, some 
uh, redress of uh, some expenses. Uh, we want to uh, we want to force Pira to or force Eversource to uh, provide better coverage, to provide uh, better planning, um, in order to uh, prevent this kind of uh, loss of property and uh, and outages in the future. There is one, at least one business who may actually close up as a result of this, who is already struggling to, to stay afloat with COVID, but this probably will put them over the top and uh, they're probably gonna close within the next two weeks. So as an intervener, we would have the right to uh, cross-examine witnesses, to provide evidence, provide testimony, and, um, and ask for, uh, for compensation for some of the things that we've lost. Uh, one of the things is, uh, I think the last number I heard was over $40,000 in fuel costs to run generators at the police station, the high school, and five uh, critical pumping facilities that were on generators for a minimum of six days. One of them was on generator for eight days. So um, I, would, I would like to uh, put on the floor that we retain Cohen and Wolf for this, uh, subject to uh, approval by the town attorney of the master agreement. So, uh, Rich? I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay. All right. Any comments? Uh, just, just out of curiosity, what's uh, Danbury's position? Because I know uh, Mark was pretty vocal about going after Eversource. Um, I don't exactly know. They're not part of this Pura investigation, but uh, what Mark has talked about was filing their own separate lawsuit in civil court, in superior court. And I, do, I don't know if they've done that yet. I know that several towns have around the state, and there are also some citizens groups in other towns that have banded together to file suits uh, to try to get compensation for sp food spoilage, prescription spo spoilage, that kind of thing. Okay. Do so, you have any time timeline for this, how long it might take? Um, no, Marty, do you know how long these take roughly? I don't think the formal investigation begins until late October. No, uh, I, I, I have no idea how long it would take. Yeah, I, I'm guessing a year, probably. It's gonna drag on for a while. Okay, any other questions? No. All right, so I, we have a motion on the floor to uh, retain Cohen and Wolf subject to uh, Review by the town attorney. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 That carries. Thank you very much. Um, I will uh, forward the master agreement over to uh, Marty in the morning. And uh, Cohen and uh, yeah, Cohen and Wolf has to. Uh, they have to do a, a search to make sure there's no conflicts within their organization uh, before we proceed. But I'll keep you in the loop on that too. So uh, that's all for tonight. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Paul, second by Rich. Those in favor? Aye. 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 That carries. Thank you very much. Thank you for the efficient meeting, and I wish everybody a lovely evening. Bye. Thank you. Okay, stay safe. Yep. Bye now.